Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. So now I am going to answer all of your questions, the Q&A, with my wrap up of uh, season one of The Boys. I have loved this show so much, as you guys know. <laughs> this is like incredible, this show. It's unbelievable. Um, yeah, I can't wait to watch season two. I mean, this is just like outstanding. This show is, it's, it's so ridiculous. It's so crazy. Uh, you know, I don't see how people can't, don't like this show, but I understand why they don't. Like, on one hand, it's like, it's hard to understand why someone wouldn't like this show. But on the other hand, I completely understand because it's so violent and it, it is so gross and so graphic in so many different ways. that I understand that, you know, some people don't want to watch that. And so that makes perfect sense to me. It is a lot to take in, definitely. Um, and it's not always easy to watch some of it. I mean, so you guys have watched me go through this show every episode. You see, sometimes I can't, I can't even look at the screen because what I'm seeing is, is, uh, is so jarring for me and I startle easily. So it's, you know, there's just certain things about the show that make it difficult. But with all that being said, as you know, I love this show and you know loving this show so much has made me feel kind of like I'm weird because the show is so disgusting at times how could anyone love this show you know <laughs> um but there's so many of you out there that love this show too so I know I know I'm not the only weird one <laughs> that's all I have to say about that anyways I do want to answer your guys questions now um we printed them all out, so I think that I'm, I hope that I get all of them here, because I do want to answer all of your guys' questions. I know that I said I would just choose a few, but I actually did want to get to all of them. Okay, so here we go. So the first question is from This Is Scorpio, and the question is, is this like an assessment of the full season of likes and dislikes of each episode in the show in general, or, the, or is this a setup like Lucy teasing Charlie Brown with a football? To the moon! <laughs> Uh, you know what? I actually answered your question, uh, this is Scorpio, and I said no, it was more like a Q&A slash review of what was going on. You may have sent me over something different, and I didn't, you may have sent me over additional questions, but I didn't see those when I printed this out. So, um, I'll, I'll go back to the post and answer whatever you put there, okay? Uh, the next one is from SV11. This person asked, did you have any expectations going into this show and have they been subverted? So yes, I had expectations going into the show. I had no idea this show was going to be so graphic and so disgusting and disturbing. I thought this was going to be a superhero show. Um, and, you know, not at all this harsh. I didn't even think it was going to have swearing in it. So I didn't know anything about the boys when I went into this show. I've not read the comics. I don't know anything about the story, the background. So I had no clue it was going to be this bad. If you, go, if you guys go back and watch my reaction to episodes one and two, you're going to see how shocked I am, okay? I mean, I'm still shocked when I watch this show because, t in my opinion, it keeps getting worse and worse as far as shock and awe go. I mean, it's... I, that's why I've stopped saying, can this get any worse? Because I was saying that quite a few bit, quite a few times in the beginning of this season. And then I realized there's no point in saying that because it does get worse. It gets worse every single episode, in my opinion. I mean, they're, they're, they're doing things in this show that I didn't think they'd be able to do for TV that I thought would have been rated NC-17, you know? So yeah, I'm shocked. So yes, yeah, so my expectations have been subverted. I wasn't expecting this show to be so jarring, but I also wasn't expecting it to be this good. So this movie is, or sorry, this show is a show that I love to hate pretty much. It's, it's one of those things, like, for instance, like Homelander, he is the worst. You stay the fuck back or I'll laser you, goddammit! I'll laser every fucking one of you! I mean, the absolute worst kind of being that I could ever imagine. And I mean, they could not have, I, they could not have created a worse villain, you know, in every sense of that word. And yet I love watching him. And the actor, Anthony Starr, my God, he is so fantastic. He's incredible because I hate that character so much. I hate Homelander. And for me, I know I've told you guys this before, when I feel that strongly about something, it's because the acting is so incredible. And also the writing, of course, 
But that actor, what he's pulled off, Anthony Starr, is is outstanding. I mean, I I can't stand that character. It's he disturbs me. Homelander really gets under my skin. Uh, you also asked, how did you like the use of their soundtrack? I love the soundtrack. Uh, I love Billy Joel. My dad brought me up on excellent music, um, and I consider Billy Joel to be one of those excellent musicians. Uh, my dad is was and is a huge uh, Billy Joel fan, and so I'm very familiar with Billy Joel. And um, I've loved the way they've used Billy Joel in this in this show, especially for each song they've chosen for different episodes. You know what I mean? Like at the at the at the end of each episode, they've chosen they've chosen specific songs to sort of like reflect on that episode. I thought that was very very cool. Uh, and I've loved the score. The score in the show is fantastic. I love the rest of the music that they use. I think it's great. Uh, it's one of the things that makes this show so great is the soundtrack and is the score for sure. Um, Sleepwalk at the end of the season made the ending really sync with me. Uh, sleepwalk at the end of the season. Okay. Not sure what you mean by sleepwalk. Um, I will say that, uh, uh, I don't know what you mean by sleepwalk. I wish I knew what you meant by that. Maybe I just don't remember. I'm not recalling something. Um, but I will say that, um, the last episode was very disturbing for me and I just want to actually change my opinion on something too, because I went back and, and watched the last, the last, the last two episodes of The Boys. I initially thought that, that, uh, um, that, uh, uh, Butcher's wife wasn't raped. I thought that she had actually had an affair with Homelander. But there were a few that, few that brought this up in the comments and I was like, hmm, you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. So I went back and rewatched those episodes and I think, I think that you're right. I definitely think that she was raped for sure. Because if this was something that was consensual, one of the things that really hit home for me was that if this were consensual, she wouldn't have been buttoning up her shirt and putting on her shoes when she was outside of the office after she had just... Uh, had sex with uh, Homelander. She, it would have been, if she wasn't so disturbed by what had just gone on, she would have taken her time inside that room to get dressed and then leave, you know, like even perhaps kiss him goodbye or whatever. But it wasn't like that. She was rushing out of that room, still putting on her clothing as she left the room. So I firmly believe that she was raped and that and that, you know, she didn't have a choice. And not just that, but she, even if she, like, can you imagine, like, she she wouldn't have been able to stop what was going on because he could have just killed her. And not just that, he could have gone after her husband as well. She, he could have gone after Butcher and killed him. So I absolutely 100% think that she was raped and that that she had sex with Homelander against her will, for sure. And she did that to protect herself. Um, she went ahead with it, but she did it to protect herself and she did it to protect a uh, butcher. And so um, I don't think it was consensual, not at all. And, you know, given myself in the same situation, I would have, uh, you know, allowed Homelander to rape me too because I would have um, not wanted to die and I, I would have wanted to save the life of my husband. So, so I get it. So, yeah. Just wanted to change my opinion on that because I did go back and I did watch that, rewatch those episodes, and um, I don't know why I initially thought that that was a consensual thing, but it definitely doesn't occur to me like that. Yeah. So, anyways, um, Stoner Zombie four two zero. I love your name. <laughs> what was your idea of the show going in? Did it surprise you how wild it was? Right. Like so. What I you know just kind of how I answered before. My idea of the show going in was like some kind of light superhero superhero show, something that wasn't wasn't at all like it is. Um, did it surprise me how wild it was? Yeah, it continues to surprise me every episode that I watch. It's this show is freaking nuts. Like I'm, I know I've said this a lot, but it's off its rocker. These writers, you know, Eric Kripke, and I've told you guys this before. I love him. He he's the creator of Supernatural. But, you know, Supernatural is um, a campy, much, much lighter show. This show, I mean, this is crazy. 
This is absolutely bonkers, this show. And I think some of you had told me that Eric wasn't able to do in Supernatural what he really wanted to do because it had to be more of like a lighthearted, kind of funny, you know, comedic horror show. But in this show, he was, uh, maybe he had some more creative freedom. I don't really know. But I mean, he really took this to the extreme. And I know many of you have also said that the comics, that this, that this show is actually very light in comparison to the comics. That's... That's outrageous to me. I don't see how it could get much worse than this in a superhero show. I mean, sure, I've watched horror movies that have been really bad, but this is not a horror movie. It's a superhero show, and I I just would never expect that it could get much worse than it is. But apparently you've told me that the comics are much worse. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, very, very fascinating. Um, Interesting to, it would be interesting to see what those comics are all about. I probably couldn't read them. I, I could probably get through a page or two maybe if they're that bad. I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe I'll try. I don't know. Let me see. Okay, Rob L. writes, what scene shocked you the most? Okay, Rob, there are so many scenes. So let me just name a few. Um, uh, one of the scenes that stands out to me a lot because of how it affected me uh, emotionally is... Um, is when uh, Homelander and Maeve let that plane go down with all those people inside. That that really messed me up. Uh, also, too, when A Train killed his girlfriend Popclaw. That 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 really did like. That was hard for me to see because I, for me, I felt like I feel like A Train does have some love for for Popclaw, but he. Uh, I don't know, you know does he love her if he could kill her you know but he's also a drug addict so i feel like he loves her but he's his his whole like way of being is being run by drugs you know so he's not himself but that that really messed me up it did that he killed her you know he he faked her overdose that that really messed me up um also uh another scene that um that shocked me was when deep pulled down his pants and and you know started started wanting uh starlight to do something you know to uh uh to pleasure him um that really shocked me too another scene that really shocked me was uh when they were at the uh, christian gathering and um the minister guy the superhero minister guy was in the back and when huey started saying what he said to him i was shocked that huey that huey did that when I mean, it was like unbelievable. The things that Huey was saying in order to get that guy to do what he wanted. I was so proud of Huey in that moment because I was like, wow, that takes a lot of courage to do what Huey did on the spot like that too, you know? He had to think on his feet, on his toes because he his phone got wet and so he wasn't able to to show the, the pastor guy, the minister guy, um, the photos, the blackmail photos. So he had to think on his feet like that. And that was really, Huey did a great job doing that. Uh, another scene that really shocked me was when I thought Kimiko got killed by Black Noir and that was very shocking for me it was very graphic and I thought that she died and I was really upset in that moment and then she didn't and I was so happy that she didn't die so happy I love Frenchie and Kimiko oh my gosh so much uh let's see what other scenes have shocked me really badly oh all of the scenes with Homelander and Elizabeth Shue oh my gosh Every single scene with those two together pretty much shocks me every time. Just that real that real mother son relationship that they <laughs> that they have uh, has been um, it's been a little crazy. And it's funny because watching it with you guys and like reacting to it, it's like I'm watching and I'm like this is a little uncomfortable. <laughs> But I'm reacting to it, and then you guys are watching my reaction later, so it's just, it's funny. I think it's, I don't know, because it does. It makes me a bit uncomfortable, but I still love watching it. It's still great. Um, definitely uh, the scene with Homelander uh, when he's talking to the news about how the plane went down and how he's saying, you know, we should be in the Department of Defense, superheroes should be, and just the... Just his conniving personality and the way he lies, the way he manipulates. I mean, that really bothers me, this guy. I mean, he is, he, like I said, he really gets under my skin, okay? Um, and also, too, you know, the last episode where he kills Elizabeth Chu. I mean, that really, I was not expecting that. 
I did not think he would do that. I did know, though, once he caught her lying, I was like, oh my gosh, something's going to go down here. But I didn't think he'd kill her. I didn't think that. And another scene that shocked me was when Butcher woke up and his wife was alive and her son. That was completely unexpected. I had no idea. I didn't think that she'd ever show up in this show. I did not think there was a child. Uh, and the fact that the child's like, what, 9, 10, 11 years old? Or is, it, is he younger than that? I don't know. But I mean, that was just shocking to me. That was another reason why I wasn't sure if she'd been raped or not. Because I was like, well, if she's been raped, why didn't she go and tell Butcher? But then I was like, well, of course she didn't. Because if she told Butcher, Butcher would try to kill Homelander. And Homelander would definitely kill Butcher. So that's why she just, you know, that's why she didn't didn't tell Butcher. And and then Vought, you know, pretty much held her captive, has been held holding her captive in this house her whole life with this kid who's Homelander's son. So yeah, those all shocked me. Uh, and oh, there's there's a lot more. Also, too, uh, when Popclaw was riding that guy's face during their sexual encounter. Um, was that Popclaw? Yeah, and she crushed that man's head. That was harsh. That was very, um, yeah, that was really unexpected. Definitely unexpected. That was, uh, that was Popclaw, right? Pretty sure it was Popclaw. Yeah. Anyways, that was, that was, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was her. That's right. Because that's why the boys blackmailed her. Yes. That was, that was a harsh scene. Yeah. So, uh, Guybon J asks, uh, how do you as a fan of fiction as a woman in general feel about the boys and other media entertainment having such strong erotica and or blatant and open visuals of trauma, gore, etc.? So that's a great question. Um, y you know, it's, uh, I have like mixed feelings about that because I am a huge fan of this content and I am a woman, I identify as a woman. Um, and you know, it, it, how do I put this? So I was speaking to um, my friend about this over the past few years. And I was always like telling him, because not now, but before, uh, horror movies were always my favorite. Horror movies and documentaries. And I could never quite understand why my, my brain liked horror movies so much. And why I liked watching all this terror and all this horror all the time. And, you know, since I was young, I mean, I, I first watched Aliens when I was probably, I think about maybe 10 or 11. Um, far too young to be watching that movie. You know what I mean? Um, my dad, I think my dad showed it to me. I mean, it wasn't a big day, whatever. It, it wasn't anything wrong, but I took a real love and liking for uh, science fiction and horror movies. And science fiction, whatever, that's, you know, that's not a big deal. But the horror aspect... You know, you guys don't know a lot about me. You know me as a reactor, but a, a, I've done a lot of work in my life, you know, in, in underrepresented communities. And I've um, I've always been very, uh, uh, very passionate about making a difference in the world. You know, I just as one person that, you know, could possibly do something good in the world. I've always wanted to do whatever I could to, uh, you know, make a positive difference in whatever small way I can. And... Um, so, so I was always very, you know, sort of like thought it was odd that while I while I'm like that and and I'm I'm passionate about about you know contributing to people and the planet and and, and making good choices, I was always thought it was very weird that I also enjoyed horror movies. And so I asked one of my friends one time, I was like, you know, isn't that weird? Like, I'm out there in the world wanting to make you know a difference and 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 do good things and be a good person, and yet I'm watching like this kind of content, which is the exact opposite. And he was like, and I also love documentaries as well. And he said to me, he said, you know, it could be that this is just, um, you know, something that, uh, that you watch because it gives you, um, it gives you access to the atrocities that go on. And this is something that you never want to be like. So he, that's what he said to me. And I was like, Okay. I mean, yeah, makes sense. I mean, The Walking Dead was one of my favorite shows. And then again, like that's like another show that is, it's full of violence. It's full of gore. It's full of trauma. And I loved that show. I haven't even finished that show. Um, I had to stop watching at a certain point because it was giving me too much anxiety actually. But, but the point I'm trying to make is that 
um, when you ask me, you know, how 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 do I as a fan of fiction, as a woman in general, feel about the boys and other media entertainment, like I'm saying, like horrors and things like that, having such strong erotica or blatant and open vis visuals of trauma and gore. It's like I have mixed feelings about it because in one one sense, I love this content. You know, I I love it. I love watching it. And it's kind of like this like addiction, you know, like it it's definitely um, an adrenaline rush when I watch this kind of content. It definitely does pump adrenaline into my body. And, and you know, sometimes it's it's difficult for me to watch. Like you guys have seen me on this journey. You see how sensitive I am. I am a very sensitive human being. And so when I watch stuff... I have to look away. And so the horror and things like this too, like I do the same thing. You know, there's there's certain parts of it I can't always watch because it just gets too much for me. It, like it gives me anxiety, but then at the, at the same time, my eyes are also totally glued to the screen. So I don't know if that answers your question. I mean, I myself am a little bit confused about it. Uh, I, you know, I'm such a huge fan of this content and, you know, there are a lot of movies too that have really, really heavy erotica, which I think, and there's some movies out there that are, I think are incredible, like incredible movies and TV shows too. There's this show um, actually called uh, uh, Normal People that came out. It's won multiple awards. It's filmed in Ireland or was Scotland, maybe it's Scotland. Um, and it's uh, two young actors are in it and it's on Hulu and it's it's very erotic this show but it's one of the best shows i think that's been made in a really long time i mean it's incredible it is what these young actors did is is it's it's amazing what they did um everybody on that show made an incredible show and that's why it's won multiple awards and it's highly erotic but i think it's it's amazing i art is is so subjective as you guys know, you know, like you guys might like something that I might not like, and I might like something that you might not like. Um, uh, for me, I, I, I don't mind watching the violence and the trauma. I'll let you guys know that one of my favorite movies of all time is called Once Were Warriors. It's won multiple awards. It won at Sundance, the Sundance Film Festival a long time ago. It is, um, it's a New Zealand film and um, it's harsh. It's one of the harshest movies I've ever seen. And yet it's one of my favorite movies. So you know what I mean? Like also too, like I just watched Moonlight. Oh my gosh. Moonlight is outstanding. And that was a harsh film. And there were times when I couldn't, I couldn't watch it because it was so harsh. It was the same with Once Were Warriors. So Again, like I know this is a very long, drawn out answer to your to your question, uh, Gaivon J. Um, but it's just to give you kind of some more insight as to who I am as a person. You know, while this content is disturbing and jarring and it's like hard to watch at times and maybe it's maybe having all this violent content out there in the world isn't good. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm not going to be the person to judge whether it's good or not. But I will say that uh, a lot of these movies have taught me a lot, you know, over my lifetime so far. And without some of these films uh, addressing, you know, serious issues, even if they're fictional in the movie, but they're still addressing issues that happen in real life, you know, I might not as I might not have learned these things as well as I have. I've been a huge movie watcher since I was a little, little girl. And I've learned a lot through watching films, you know, and a lot in life as well, of course, out in real life. But I think that movies and, and TV shows, they have the capacity to to translate real life experiences into a fictional, you know, situation um, or a moment in a show or a movie. And the person watching that can perhaps get something out of that, you know. So I think that is very powerful. I think it's a very powerful thing. And I think that uh, movies and television, television are a very powerful tool as well to get those messages out to people. Um, and so, but again, with great power comes great responsibility. So people who make content too, I think, need to be accountable for what they're putting out there too. So I do feel that as well. And that was a long answer to your question. Uh, please forgive me if it's offensive in any way to ask 
with gender specific in mind. I just wonder because men are typically more raised in these uncouth kinds of media environments. And I'm wondering about you personally and from a female perspective, since the show has so much of all these elements. I hope that I answered that for you. Uh, okay, Syed Quadri. Uh, what are some of your favorite Easter eggs from the season that you noticed? P.S. Your setup looks so comfortable and cozy. Uh, some of my favorite Easter eggs. Uh, you know what? I can't actually think of any right now at the top of my head. Um, but Syed, this 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 setup is very comfy and cozy. I'm just going to show you guys what's going on here. So this is like a like a like a couch chair. Just because this couch right here, this futon, if you guys can see that, this futon is like 20 years old and it's not very comfortable anymore it's lost um it's lost a lot of its a lot of its uh like foam so that's why i sit on this pillow and i have this here because the back the back right here of the uh, futon couch is not very comfortable either so we, i put this here i put this here because sometimes I'm sitting here for quite a while you know what i mean so i put all this here so i could be really comfy and we don't have a couch. We don't have another couch to put here that I can sit on. And the chair that I was sitting on in, in my very first videos, if you guys look back, that chair is broken. So every time I would sit in it, it was like off to one side and my back, it wasn't comfortable because I was always kind of like this off to one side. So it didn't really work. So we just thought that bringing this, this futon, you know, into this space and using this little area right here where I could watch movies would, would, would be a good idea. And I also have one of these in my bed because when I sit in my bed and I'm working on my computer, these couch chairs are so perfect for doing that. They're really, they're really, really awesome. And these, these, these bolster pillows here are about 20 years old as well. <laughs> these are so old. Yeah. So yeah, that's, this is my little setup and yeah, it's really comfy and I like to put everything over here, stuff that I love. And this b b book is so funny. What would Keanu do? <laughs> this book is hilarious. Personal philosophy and awe-inspiring advice from the patron saint of woe. <laughs> I know I say woe a lot. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times, you guys, when I when I say words to it, I get brain fog. And I, in the moment, I, I, I repeat myself. And I, I don't um, remember, you know, like a different word to use in that moment. So I, I end up saying like wow or woe a lot. It's, I know. Uh, Syed, sorry, I can't remember any Easter eggs right now, but, uh, I will think about that and I'll write something under the comments, okay? Sherrod Vemelanathan, Vemelanathan? Uh, hi Kazi, you, you've, at, you've, you're tasked to take out the heroes. How would you go about doing it? Oh my gosh. Uh, well, that depends. I mean... Do I have superheroes? Do I have abilities? Am I just a human with no abilities? Um, maybe I would take some compound V, but I don't know. I mean, how would I know? I mean, first of all, I would definitely want to be, I would definitely want to have um, Homelander's abilities. Okay. Well, actually maybe A-Trains. I'd like to be, have a combination maybe of A-Trains and Homelander. Yeah. Because it seems like that those abilities combined you there's nothing that could stop that that you'd be indestructible so how would i go about doing it um you know i don't really know now because i really thought that uh the fbi agent uh jennifer esposito that's her real name i forget her her, her name name on the show right now but i thought that she was going to be able to take them down and that didn't happen you know um i really thought that, that when they were going to expose compound v that that was going to be the one thing they could take down bot but that's not happening so i don't know what i would um how i would go about doing it i would i would work with the boys um with mother's milk and frenchy and um and butcher and huey and a Kimiko, and I would team up with them, and I guess just do what they're doing. I don't, yeah, I wish I had a better answer than that. I'm sorry. I just don't know how you can take these guys out. I really don't. Like, I thought that, uh, that, uh, Madeline was gonna be Homelander's weakness, and it, he doesn't have a weakness. Oh, actually, no, now he does. His son is his weakness for sure. But, um, yeah, that's interesting, actually. Maybe I would have to do something with his son, but I couldn't kill his son. I, I could never kill someone. Like, 
uh, so I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know how I would do it. I'm so sorry. I really don't know how I would do it. It's hard. Like, it's like, how, how do you kill these people that are like unstoppable? I, I don't know. You know, maybe as I go on, I'll have a better idea of how I could do it. Okay. This is from artist eight, six, zero. Uh, what is your favorite scene from season one? Uh, my favorite scene. Oh man. Um, one of them is when Huey and, uh, Annie are making love. It was just so beautiful. You know, it was like some respite in this horrible, horrible scenario that they're both in. And, uh, just seeing them come together like that and, and sharing something special and seeing that a real love is developing, that was, it was nice, you know, it was like, this show is so jam packed full of stuff that's difficult to watch and very, very jarring for me to watch that when I got to see that, it was like a little bit of, ah, you know, like relaxation and watching their relationship develop and flourish like that. It was, it was nice. Um... I also liked the scene with Maeve and her uh, ex-girlfriend, ex-wife. Uh, it showed me a, a side of Maeve that I wasn't sure was really fully still there. And now I understand Maeve more than I did before. Um, I liked seeing that, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, I feel like w with the exception of Homelander, I feel like all of these soups, there's some redeeming qualities about them. Um, and even with Homelander, it's like, because I know how, how he was raised pretty much in like a box, a cage, a room, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't justify his actions at all, but it does give me insight as to like why he's like that. You know what I mean? But I still don't see anything, like I don't see anything redeeming about him at all. But all the other soups, there is, I see something redeeming about each of them, um, and the more that I go through the show, the more that I'm going through it, I'm seeing more of that now as I go. Um, but I don't, I don't know if I have a favorite scene from season one. It's really hard to say. Um, you know what? Maybe my favorite scene, actually, the one that really moved me was the one I told you about uh, Huey and Annie. But also when Kimiko, when she was dying, and then that song came on. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. She's always gone too long. Anytime she goes away. Then when that song came on and Frenchie went over to her and he thought she was dead and then she wasn't and you saw how happy Frenchie was, like their love connection is also something that I love about this show. So that's that, that scene right there was definitely one of my favorite scenes as well. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Yeah. Again, I think it's a, just the respite from the intensity of this show. I love those scenes when I get to see um, these people loving each other. I like it. Um, Paul Beer. So how, so as watching the boys made you want to read the source material? <laughs> uh, Paul, I don't, like I said, it would be interesting to read the source material. Um, I, I kind of do. I'm not really sure, like, I'm, I, I'm not really sure if I, if I could deal with it, because as you've all told me, this show is, is nothing in comparison to the source material. So I'm not sure if I could actually get through it, but I'd be interested in looking at it. Yeah, I would for sure. Um, Kev John 11, or sorry, just Kev John. If you could have a child and give it compound B, but not be obligated to vote, would you give it to them? If yes, what power would you want them to have? So, I don't actually know. Um, I did read your question on, on the, under, under the comments. I did read this a few days ago and I was actually thinking about, it. I was like, Hmm, would I do that? I don't know. I mean, giving my child compound V essentially makes them a, like a WMD, doesn't it? A weapon of mass destruction kind of does, doesn't it? Um, so I don't know if I want, if I want to do that with my kid. I don't know. Like I can see how it make my child's life easier but I can also see how it made my, my child's life a lot more difficult and even if Vought even if they didn't have to go work with Vought you know there's always other people in the world other organizations in the world other corporations in the world that may want to steal my child for their for their gain so that would be something I'd be very nervous about um what power would I want them to have well probably I'd want them to probably have a train's power or homelanders because they're both so powerful I'm not saying the other characters aren't powerful as well they are but those guys are like it just that's pretty 
pretty incredible what Homeland or an A-Train can do, you know? I mean, it's, they're all outstanding their powers, but that's just like something pretty crazy what those two do. Uh, Apex Venom, favorite character, favorite scene, favorite line. Oh man. Okay. Favorite character, probably I would say Frenchie or Mother's Milk. Um, yeah. I love those guys. Uh, you know, obviously I love Starlight. I love Huey. Butcher, I don't know. Butcher kind of, I mean, he's amazing, but he kind of upsets me because he's a little bit too obsessed. Um, so yeah, I'd say probably Mother's Milk, Frenchie. Yeah. And then, you know, Huey and Starlight. Yeah. And Kimiko. I love Kimiko. She's, she's really awesome too. She's definitely awesome. And I love Jennifer Esposito's role as the, uh, CIA, is it CIA or FBI agent? I think she's amazing. She's awesome. I love her too. Yeah. Uh, favorite scene? Oh, I think my favorite scenes are the ones that I already uh, 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 pointed out for artist for what is your favorite scene when artist 860 asked me the question? Yeah, those are my favorite scenes for sure. Um, and my favorite character? Yeah, those are my favorite characters. My favorite, the favorite, my favorite line is probably fucking die bomb. What Butcher says, though, this is di diabolical. <laughs> That's a pretty good line. Yeah, I like I, I like that diabolical and his accent. It's, it's pretty awesome. Movie not. Since the author of the comic book, the boys kind of disliked superheroes. He wrote the boys as a satire to the superhero genre. My question to you, Cassie, what is your relationship for superheroes in general? And what do you know of them, like Marvel and DC heroes? Um, well, my relationship for superheroes in general, well, um, I love them. I mean, growing up, my superheroes were, uh, I had several, but right off the top of my head, they were Superman and Princess Leia, um, and, uh, Ripley from Aliens. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, so what is my relationship for superheroes in general? And what do I know about them? Like Marvel and DC heroes. Well, I mean, I've grown up with all these guys my whole life. I mean, I've been watching Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman my entire life. So it's, I love, I love all these superheroes. And, and as these movies have come out, as I've gotten older, they've just gotten better and better and better. And I used to watch all the cartoons when I was really young too. So it wasn't just, I mean, even like, do you guys remember Scooby-Doo? Oh my gosh, I used to love Scooby-Doo. Those guys were all superheroes to me too, because they were out there fighting bad and trying to, you know, do good things. And that's why I think Supernatural is one of my favorite shows. Like, I consider those two guys kind of like superheroes that are out there fighting all the demons of the world, trying to save people, trying to save humanity. I love superheroes. They're always trying to save humanity, you know? I mean, at least not the guys in this show, but real superheroes. <laughs> Um, I, I, I watched the Joker. You guys have probably seen that. Um, I watched it for the first time last year, um, as one of my first watches ever on this channel. And I hadn't watched it when it first came out because it, I had been told it was a very dark movie and it was, you know, depressing. And while it was excellent, it was really dark. And, you know, so when I, when it first came out, I wasn't in a place with myself personally, emotionally and mentally to really dive into that material. And so I watched it as soon as I felt good enough to watch it. And when I watched it, it was, it blew my mind. I mean, Joker is, um, is such an incredible movie, you know? Um, it, it, it brought back a lot of flooding emotions for me though, too, because of Heath Ledger. And I loved Heath Ledger as Joker. Uh, I mean, really loved Heath Ledger as Joker. But what Joaquin Phoenix, what he did though was outstanding. I mean, he's... He's incredible. And I, I love superheroes so much, Marvel and DC, that every time they change a superhero, I actually have a little bit of a hard time accepting them at first. And and it's it's not because I don't want to see different superheroes. It's because I get so emotionally invested and attached to the ones that are there after years of watching them that I it's like when they when they replace them with somebody different, it's like it it doesn't like I get sad about it. I know. I'm sensitive. I just do. You know, when they came out with the new Superman and Lois show and they've got this guy playing Superman, I'm, it's like, I know I'm going to watch the show. I'm going to watch it. I will. But it's just like, ugh, you know, I want Henry Cavill, 
you know, because he's my new Superman. I mean, Christopher Reeve was, and then it took me a while to get used to Henry Cavill. And I was even mad about that when that first happened. I was like, no, I was like, nobody can replace, you know, Christopher Reeve. My dad brought me up on Superman, the originals, you know? And, uh, so it was just, uh, it's just one of those things. I get very attached to these characters. And then when they change them, it hurts my feelings. <laughs> Even though I'm an adult, I'm a grown ass woman and it still hurts my feelings. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, the same with Star Wars. It's like those guys, you know, those guys have always been superheroes to me, you know, all those guys fighting, you know, good versus evil. I don't know. I mean, there's, you know, specifically talking about Marvel and DC, what do I think about them in general is I love, I love superheroes. I love them all. I mean, some I like more than others, of course. I have my favorites, but, um, but I love, I love them all. And, uh, you know, when, uh, when, uh, Chadwick Boseman died, that was, uh, that was really, that was, I found that, uh, you know, even though I didn't know him personally, it was just a very, it was very, very heartbreaking to, uh, to see that, that that had happened to him. And, uh, you know, I, I, I thought I felt the same thing about when Christopher Reeve, when that accident happened with him, you know, and he became a quadriplegic and, um, and then he died, you know, a few years later. It, I, yeah, it's, uh, and you know, Heath Ledger dying, you know, I mean, that was like, that really, that was really, really difficult for me. So, I hope that answers your question about my uh, my overall general feeling about um, relationship with Marvel and DC heroes. Uh, I get very emotionally attached to these guys and the characters they play. Uh, I love them so much. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know, you know, like watching movies is being off in fantasy land, you know, not necessarily like, like real life sometimes. And uh, it's nice to escape into a movie. Um, but sometimes it's not really an escape because you get, I get really, really, uh, attached to these characters and I feel, I feel a lot of things deeply for them when they get hurt or when they go through traumatic experiences. Like you guys have seen, you guys have been watching my videos for a while now, so I'm sure you, you, you recognize, um, my, uh, you know, how invested I get into these characters and the storylines too. Uh, do you agree with the author of Garth Ennis or do you find superhero stories fascinating? Um, so no, I don't agree with the, I don't agree with the, uh, author. No. Um, I find superhero stories extremely fascinating. I've always loved them. Um, and yeah, I mean, I know there are people out there that don't like superhero movies. I get that. I personally don't know why that is. I think they're incredible. I love them. That, that this genre is one of my favorites. Um, it's always exciting. Um, and it always... It's always emotional for me, you know, like watching Vision die. Oh my God, you know, that was that I was so distraught when I saw that, when I watched that, um, and then watching, uh, Tony Stark die. I mean, I bawled my eyes out. I mean, maybe that's ridiculous for you guys, or maybe that's ridiculous for some people because it's a superhero movie. I don't know, but for me, these characters are just as important as characters in other movies. I'm, I don't really see like a difference. Uh, to me, this is still great, great movies. I, I love, I mean, it's still art to me. I think it's, I think they're very, very well done, the movies that are being put out there. Sure, I have, I have ones that I like better than others, just like everybody. But, um, I think they're awesome. I love superhero movies. And I'm going to continue to watch them till the day I die because it's, I love them so much. So, yeah. Uh, JQ, what is your view? What in your view is the most shocking, horrific thing done by a character in season one? Um, so I'd say that Homelander and A-Train take the cake. Yeah, because like I said, like Homelander killing all those people on the plane. That was disgusting and disturbing, but it was, for me, it was equally as disturbing when A-Train killed his girlfriend. And I know it's only one person compared to like 150, but the thing is, is that A-Train killing the person that he loves, that's what disturbed me so, 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 so intent, intensely. And the fact that he forced her to overdose, like that was even, 
um, I've had I've had friends that have struggled with addiction in my life, and so just like just that the scene was so disturbing, and maybe like what he did wasn't nearly as bad as what Homelander did, and I, it's not nearly it's not as bad obviously, but it was for some reason that scene with A Train killing his girlfriend really disturbed me. It just really really shocked me and disturbed me, um, and uh, but so did you know so did Homelander and Maeve letting that plane go down. That was. Um, I just can't believe that they did that. You know, I, it, it was, I mean, I was, you guys saw my, I was shocked at that. And I will also say it was very, I was very shocked and disturbed when Homelander, um, killed Elizabeth Shue the way he did. I mean, that was one of the most disturbing, disturbing yet peaceful death scenes I've ever seen because it was like, she went away peacefully. It kind of seemed like, but not really. Yeah. So that was very disturbing to me, very shocking and horrific to me. Enrique Alves, what character development did you like the most in this season? Um, I like that. I like Maeve, how they developed her. Cause I went from thinking that she was just this horrible, awful thing, person, woman, um, to, uh, to being somewhat redeemable. She's got some redeeming qualities, although she's still doing this, all this, these horrible things. So she's not really redeemable, but I'm seeing different layers to her character, which I really enjoy. I'm seeing different layers to everyone's character, though, which I'm definitely enjoying. Um, so it's not just Maeve. I mean, I'm seeing different layers to A-Train's character, to... Okay, Frenchie. Actually, you know what? Let me just say, I would say actually his character development I've liked the most. Because when I first... In, in episode one of this show, compared to the last episode, I went from really disliking Frenchie thinking this guy was just like like a horrible murdering criminal guy to loving Frenchie and all now I love Frenchie I think Frenchie's amazing I've always thought Mother's Milk was always a good guy so like that's not a huge character development for me but Frenchie I went from like thinking that he was like a horrible human being now I love him I love Frenchie like that one line he said you and me we're the same, you know, uh, hard, uh, uh, we're the same, like, uh, hard on the outside, soft on the inside, like a pineapple or, or, or like an egg or like a pineapple, maybe, you know, like that was one of the most funny and hysterical, just hysterical and outrageous things coming from this guy who's like a murderer and like this really hardcore criminal and he's yet so soft on the inside, you know, and he really truly is when it comes to Kimiko and just in general. And so seeing sort of that, that character development has been really special for me. Um, which character do you, okay, Daisy Alexander, which character do you relate with the most? Um, hmm. I don't know, actually. I mean, uh, probably Starlight, I guess. I know that's just like cliche, but I don't know. I can't imagine myself ever doing the things that these people have done in this show. So that's, uh, it's, it's hard for me to relate to anybody other than her, really. Um, or I guess, well, Hugh, well, no, because Huey blew up, um, Huey uh, decimated uh, Translucent. And I'm not sure if I could do that. Although, I wonder, maybe I could. If it was, if that was my only choice, either, either him getting away or him being blown up. I don't know. At this point right now, probably Starlight, and I know that's that's kind of boring, but um, um, Mother's Milk, maybe? Yeah, I could see myself kind of, maybe I, I relate to him. I relate to him as well. Um, Mother's Milk, I see that he, he wants to do the right thing, you know, and he loves his family, and he loves his wife, and he loves his daughter, and he wants to be a good daddy, but he's getting sucked into this stuff. Um, because he also wants to do the right thing in the world and he wants to, I don't know, he wants to wrong, he, or sorry, he wants to wrong, he wants to right the wrongs and, um, he wants to get, get rid of the, the evil in the world. So yeah, I can relate to him a little bit too, to Mother's Milk. Yeah. Uh, future filmmaker 39480, who are your top five char favorite characters in The Boys? Uh... My top five favorites. Um, 
Okay, Homelander, I'd say definitely because he's like like I said, okay, like I can't stand the guy. He's so horrible, but that's one of the reasons why he's such a good character. So I have to say he's definitely one of my favorites because he's so bad. He's just horrible. Um, A Train, because again, he's so horrific. I can't stand him. Um, I can't stand his character. Oh my god. Um, uh, so those are the guys I like because they're so bad, but they're because they're so good because they're so bad. Their acting is outstanding. Um, and then uh, Mother's Milk, I love Frenchie. I love I love Mother's Milk and Frenchie so much. I love Starlight. I love Huey. Um, I love Huey's dad, Simon Pegg. Um, let me think. Think who else here? Yeah, that's probably, that's probably, those are my favorites, yeah, I'd say. And not in any, any necessarily, or the order, but those are my favorite characters, yeah. Um, oh, but I also love uh, Jennifer Esposito. She's amazing, too. The CIA, is it FBI or CIA? Oh, I can't remember right now. She's the director anyways, and she's amazing. I love her, too. She's awesome. Ron Potter, I think that Anthony Starr is the best actor in this show. I want to know who is the best for you. I'm Polish and I don't speak good English. Sorry if you don't understand. Oh, no, I understand, Ron. No, no worries. Um, Anthony Starr is, I would say, is by far the best actor in this show. Not by far. I mean, everybody's outstanding in this show. They are. Um, I think that what Anthony Starr, though, has done has is, uh, like, above and beyond. I mean, he's... He's, uh... Yeah, I... He's he's the perfect villain. He he's like you know, he uh, he's giving Joaquin Phoenix a run for his money. I believe that. I mean, do you remember Joaquin and Gladiator? Whoa, that was one of the most terrifying villains I have ever seen in my life. Yeah, he 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 frightened me so badly, and that's how I feel about Homelander. Homelander really 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 frightens me. And Anthony Starr has done. I mean. He needs to win an award for his job on this show because even though the the character he's playing is so diabolical, <laughs> so crazy, he is uh, he's just done an amazing job. I mean, it's it's incredible. I I, I still I, I'm blown away by his performance every time I watch this show. So yeah, uh, Norman Baggio. What's the most diabolical thing Homelander has ever done that you can't forget? Well. When he blew up, when he, or sorry, when he let that plane go down with all those people in it, he didn't care. And he like turned it around and tried to make it look like, you know, it wasn't his fault, even though he, he bl like blew up, you know, with his laser eyes, he blew up, um, the, the airplane, uh, you know, dashboard area. And it's because of him, the plane crashed. It was ridiculous. You know, it was totally ridiculous. I mean, he's, and also, and, and. Also, when Homelander burnt Elizabeth Shue's eyes out, Madeline's eyes out, I can't, I'll never forget that. No. And also, too, when Homelander, um, it's pretty much Homelander, yeah. Also, uh, when every time he's with Elizabeth Shue, when he's like, or when he was, um, he's like, he wants to like, it's like he wants to breastfeed, you know? He wants to breastfeed off of Elizabeth Shute's breasts because he's got this, that's like his mother. He never had a mother. So that's, um, that wasn't diabolical, obviously, but the other two ones were diabolical for sure. Uh, MKF30, do you feel that Homelander's behavior is justified or as a result of his messed up childhood, why he is the way he is? Also, Anthony Starr would make a great reverse flash, I think. So... I do not think Homelander's behavior is justified as a result of his childhood. Not at all. No way. No way. Do I understand why, partly why he is the way he is? Yes, I understand. And I, and I get it on a psychological scale. I understand. But is it just, is his behavior justified? No way. No way. Not at all. Not at all. Nope. And he would make a great reverse flash. Yeah. I mean, he's, Anthony Starr is such an amazing actor. I mean, it's, I, yeah, I don't, I'm not, I, I think that there's not, there's not much Anthony Starr could not do in the world of acting as far as characters go. He'd be great doing anything, I think, pretty much. 
Um, Bongzilla, wh who do you think Black Damar is under the mask? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> I haven't looked it up online, so I don't know. I am very curious, so I would like to know who it is. <laughs> and I'm wondering if they're ever going to reveal us his identity. I would like to know. I think it's pretty funny his name is Black Noir. That literally means like black black. <laughs> Crazy. Dora, what do, what do you think about Starlight Annie and Huey's friendship relationship throughout season one and how do you think it will progress in season two? Dora, I love their friendship relationship. I want them to be together. Um, I love them so much together. I think they're good for each other and uh, I hope that I hope that they do progress in season two. I hope that they get more serious in season two. I want them to be together. I want the two of them to, they have real love and I want them to, to, to express that with each other. I want them to have that. It's one of the most beautiful parts of this show is, is that love connection that they have. I want, I really want them to be together. I don't want it to, you know, I know that, that she knows what happened what Huey was doing, but then she realizes that he's really a good guy and trying to help and that Vought is behind all these horrible things. So I really want them to stay together and be together and or get back together. I want them to be together and I hope that season two shows that. I really do. Psychonaut, what was your favorite time that Huey got splattered with blood? <laughs> oh my god. And besides Huey or Starlight, if you had to date a character from the show, who would it be? Um... Um, so I would say that my favorite time Huey got splattered with blood, I, I wouldn't call the word favorite, I can't call it that, but I would say the most disturbing one for me was Robin, Robin's blood, and he was still holding her hands. I mean, translucent was disturbing, it was, but not, not like, uh, not like Robin. That was highly, highly disturbing. Um, so I would say favorite, not really a favorite, but the most disturbing for me. Yeah. So, um, if I had to date a character, so I would say, um, the characters I would date would be, uh, um, I don't know, I guess, I guess Huey, Mother's Milk, Frenchie, um, Maeve. If Maeve wasn't so evil, I mean, if, yeah, okay. Only Maeve if she had the good parts of her, not the bad parts, okay? That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, because the other parts, forget it. Starlight. Starlight. Yeah. She's pretty awesome, for sure. Um, you know, yeah, she's awesome too. But yeah, mainly, mainly um, uh, Huey, Mother's Milk, and Frenchie. Yeah. Yeah, those guys, yeah. Um, Dead Flynn, no, uh... Bro, what did you think of Starlight's mom in this season? Didn't like her at all. Don't like her. Would like to see her come around and not be trying to constantly use her daughter for, you know, her popularity. Um, Dead Flintstone, do you think French and Kamika will get together and live happily ever after? Oh man, I really hope so. I really, really hope so. I love them together. I love them so much. Leo Pena, has the deep been redeemed? Good question. No, he hasn't been redeemed, but do I see redeeming qualities in Deep? Yes, I do. Definitely. I definitely do. I definitely have some more compassion for Deep now. Um, I definitely have more compassion for Deep now. Yeah. And um, I, I have a, a little, I'm hoping that Deep will be redeemed and that he will come around to be a really good guy. I'm hoping for that because I do see, I do see good, good things about him. Definitely. Yeah. Um, intercoastal, in intercoastal. Hey Kaz, I was very curious on your progress with A-Train. It seems you took a connection with the character's development. What's your takeaway in general and are you expecting anything for him on season two? So, yeah, I, I didn't, initially I really did not like A-Train at all, um, for several different reasons, because he killed Robin and had no remorse. Um, he didn't show any remorse for killing Robin whatsoever. Uh, then he also killed his girlfriend, although I, and then I started to see he did have remorse about his girlfriend, so I am starting to see that. So every time he has, like, these flashbacks about Popclaw, it looks like he's very remorseful about killing his girlfriend. So that looked remorseful to me. Um, I, I, 
I'm, uh, I have more compassion for A-Train now because now that I see that he's a total drug addict, I can see I'm able to separate some of the bad behavior from the fact that he's a drug addict and the addiction is running him as opposed to perhaps maybe who he really is. So yes, I have slightly altered my opinion on A-Train because of those things. Um, in the beginning, um, I saw him as bad as Homelander because I, you know, he killed Robin and had no remorse and I was like, how can you do that? You know, how can you kill someone who had no remorse? So, but now I'm seeing a different side of A-Train. I'm seeing that this is in, with him having an addiction issue, that right there sort of like gives me compassion for him. It doesn't justify his behavior, not at all, okay? No. However, it does show that something else is going on here and, and perhaps it's not really who he is, you know? Like he's doing these things out of his addiction and out of whatever else is going on, but it's not really who he truly is. So, yeah. Um, am I expecting anything from him in season two? Yeah. I mean, I was really disappointed at the end of this season that how he freaked out on Starlight. I was hoping that um, that they would they would sort of join forces there, and Starlight would convince him that like what what she was doing was right. The fact that he had a heart attack and she's and she was you know. Um, resuscitating him what i'm hoping in season two is that he realizes that she it that she's helping him and i hope that because of that that he will change his ways that's what i hope i hope that he will get more in touch with who he truly is which i'm hoping is a really good person and i'm hoping that he'll get help with his compound v addiction that's what i'm hoping i'm hoping that he comes more over to like starlight's side you know what i mean that's what I'm hoping for. Um, Zane Kamal, do you think that A-Train will become good in season two considering that Starlight helped him with his heart attack? Yeah, right? I think I just answered that. Well, do I think he will? I'm hoping he will. I'm really hoping that he will. I am. That's what I'm hoping for A-Train. I'm hoping for that. Don't know if that's going to happen, but I would really like to see that. I would love that. A-Train seems very, uh, very... Um, um, a train is like like Homelander is like just like a horrible you know being, but there's something about A train that um I don't know I can tell he's suffering you know, and so yeah I want him to become good in season two I want his suffering to I want him to get help yeah John Bell if you could have played any of the female characters in season one which one would you have played and why um uh good question. Huh. Maybe, uh, uh, no, I don't know. Maybe Maeve, because Maeve seems, seems so torn. Kind of like A-Train. She seems very torn. So, yeah, I think that would have been a cool role to play. And the role of uh, Jennifer Esposito, I think her character role is pretty cool, too. I mean, she's, you know, very good, but she also shows, like, a lot of power, a lot of strength. Especially around Butcher, who's, you know, constantly trying to, you know, like, sort of steer how everything goes. Um, she's a very powerful character. And I like her character a lot. Um, yeah, probably those two. Um, did you ask male or female, or did you just ask female? Oh, yeah, you said female. Yeah, so probably those two. I think those would be, those would be fun characters to play. Maeve just, Maeve also because there's so many different layers to her character. Like she's such a horrible, you know, being for the things that she's doing. But then you see that she's also like suffering. Like she's, she has remorse for the things that she's doing too. So there's, because of those different layers, that would be fun to play that kind of character. You know, I probably wouldn't be any good at it, but that would be fun to play that character. Uh, um, <clears throat> future seasons questions. Movie fan, what are your expectations for season two? Uh, more diabolical situations. <laughs> more craziness. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, that um, Annie and Huey uh, get back together. I'm hoping that happens. I hope that Kimiko and Frenchie uh, get together and get into a really good relationship. I'm hoping that... Um, I hope that Jennifer Esposito is able to help the boys with taking down Vought. Uh, in, I'm not sure how they're going to do that, but in some way. Um, 
I'm hoping that Butcher and his wife get back together because I also want Butcher to have closure. He's a very damaged, damaged human being and he's really hurt, you know? Um, and I want him to have some peace because he's really, he's not at peace. And I, I feel bad for Butcher. I feel bad for his ex-wife too. I mean, my gosh, can you imagine being raped by this Homelander guy, having his child and then being pretty much in jail, you know, or you know, being trapped by Vought, not being able to tell your ex-husband what happened, the love of your life. I, yeah, I mean, that's just like, so I'm hoping for all those things to happen. I really want to see those things happen. I also want to see, um, I also want to see uh, A-Train become a better guy. I want to see him realize that he almost died from a heart attack from compound B. I want to see him give up the drug and become a better person. Yeah. And same with Maeve. I want to see Maeve become a better person too. Uh, what are your, th uh, Silver Blade Productions, what are your theories and predictions for season two? Um, I don't really have a lot of theories and predictions right now. Um, uh, you know, you guys, a lot of you guys are really great at theories and things like that, and you write a lot of them down under, under the comments under my videos. I'm not a huge theory person, um, when it comes to, you know, theories, when it comes to, like, thinking about what's going to happen in these shows. I sort of just go into everything that I watch without really having those things. Um, and the reason for that is I'm always, I'm always attempting to manage my expectations when I watch something. So whenever I come up with a theory, for me, that, that sets a certain level of expectation of what I'm hoping might happen so I can be right in my theory. Um, and I know that's not the way it is for everybody. I know sometimes theories for people are, you know, what they're fun for you to do, right? For me personally, though, my theories do turn into expectations. And so I, I, I actually try to do my best not to have those because it, um, sometimes I ruin what I'm watching because I want certain things to happen, um, with my theories and expectations. And, uh, and then, and then I'm, I get upset about that because <laughs> I get let down. So yeah, I don't really have any theories right now. I mean, of course I have some expectations. Uh, I do want to see certain things happen. Like I just said a second ago when I answered the previous question, but as far as having like really like some real theories, I I'm, I'm, you know, there's sure there's like a lot of thoughts I have going through my head about like what I'm hoping will happen, but I'm like, I said, I'm trying to like manage my expectations so that I go into this next season you know, just going in knowing that I love this show and, you know, um, it's been fantastic so far and, and I, I'm hoping it'll be just as good as it has been in season one because season one has blown my mind. Um, and that's, yeah, that's about it. I'm sorry if I didn't answer that question good enough. I just, I don't really have any theories for season two. Um, just kind of like, you know, just trying to keep my, my, manage my expectations and keep those in check so that I don't, you know, get let down if they don't go the way that I want them to in season two. I hope that's, hope that's okay. Um, so, uh, Ilama, Ilamalad, La, oh, Lamalad, Lamalad, uh, 98, Lamalad, 98. Uh, knowing that there is already a season three underway, what are your expectations for seasons two? Okay. Well, I just answered, I just answered that question. So, um, yeah, same thing. You know, I want, I want to see Huey and Annie together. I want to see Kimiko and Frenchie together. I want to see Mother's Milk back together with his wife and his daughter, for sure. I want to see Butcher back together with his wife. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to happen, especially with, he says she's got uh, Homelander's kids, Homelander's son. Um, I want to see these guys beat Vought. I do. I want to see them beat Vought. I mean, obviously, they're the good guys and Vought's the bad guys. So I want to see them beat Vought somehow, some way. I want to see Maeve become a better person. I want to see her get back together with her wife or ex-girlfriend. I would love to see that. That'd be amazing. Uh, subs uh, scriptwriter Tube. Would you like to see Meg Ryan Huey's uh, real-life mother, yeah, Jack Quaid, come on the show and play his absentee mother who probably had to leave because she had power or something related to Vought? Yeah. I'd love to see Meg Ryan come on the show. Of course. She's amazing. I love her. Meg Ryan's an amazing actress. Remember her in Top Gun? She's been in so many incredible movies. Sleepless in Seattle. Oh my gosh. She's been in so many movies. Yeah. She was like the she was like the Hollywood sweetheart in the 90s. She was in all like the top movies. Yeah, she's awesome. Uh, Ted Poole. Will we ever know how did MM name come about? <laughs> I hope we find out how Mother's Milk's name came about. That'd be cool, because I have no idea. <laughs> uh, Swan Ronson, what character do you want to see more of in the future? 
Um, I'd like to see more of Butcher's wife's character in the future, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And more of Jennifer Esposito's character in the future, too. Uh, Percy, Patty, will you do season two? Of course I'm doing a season two. Are you kidding? I love this show. <laughs> I'm definitely doing season two. Where's Waldo? Are those chicken of the woods shrooms on your plate? Oh yeah, that picture. Uh, they weren't chicken of the woods shrooms, no. Um, but thanks for asking. Uh, Anthony Fonseca, what are you eating? Oh, so I was eating just a huge salad and I had a these pizza potato boats um, that we make, they're so good. They're potatoes. You bake the potatoes in the oven and then you scoop out the middle and then you can use the middle for like hash browns. And then you put like tomato sauce in there and a bunch of vegetables and they're like, but they're pizzas on a potato. They're so delicious. Oh my gosh, they're amazing. I think I had asparagus on my plate too. Um, Sega fan. Hi, Cassie. What superpower would you want? Hmm. Probably... A train or um but oh, deep would be pretty cool though because I to be able to like be in the ocean and be able to communicate with everything in the ocean that'd be pretty that'd be pretty pretty cool you know I don't know like how powerful that is but it'd be pretty neat superpower to have and also obviously Homelanders because his his is very powerful but A trains being able to run that fast you know um. I don't know. I was always a runner. Well, in elementary school, I was a very fast runner. And I used to be like one of the top sprinters when I was in elementary school. And I was like the top of the girls. I think when I was in like grade four, grade five. And I'll never forget that because I could outrun some of the boys in the sprints. And I always thought I was the cool one. <laughs> so, yeah. So I kind of like think that's cool. Like A-Train's ability to run fast. I don't know. I just think that's really, that's really awesome. Yeah. Um, but, 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 but Homelanders being able to see through walls like Superman, X-ray vision, that's a pretty cool superpower to have. And I think another superpower that I have that I would love to have would be the ability to read someone's mind. That would be an amazing superpower. Don't you think? So that was like Mesmer, actually. Mesmer has the power to read the person's mind as long as he touches them. So actually, I might actually have wanted Mesmer's superhero or his power now that I think about it yeah yeah uh Sega fan I would like to see a more in-depth behind the scenes video with your editing process okay yeah at some point I think I'm gonna do that um I wasn't gonna do more behind the scenes videos because there were a lot of people that left super negative comments under that one that I did and that was a shock for me I gotta tell you guys it was you know, I did that behind the scenes video because I wanted you guys to see that I take this seriously and that I'm putting effort into doing this. It's something I enjoy doing and I really want to do this. And it's, I mean, I put my heart and my soul into this stuff. And I don't know, I, I thought sharing that with you guys would be something really special and something really cool. Um, and yeah, I mean, a lot of you liked it, but there were some people that were really rude in the comments, were super rude. And I thought that was, it was cruel. There was like no need for that, you know? And I don't know where that stuff comes from, where that negativity comes from with you guys, the ones that you of you that left those negative comments. But, you know, if you want to leave negative comments and just go somewhere else, like this is not a space for that. You know, I want my channel to be a place where you guys come and you have fun and you get joy and laughter out of what I'm doing. And it, it brings you some, you know, happiness. That's like the whole point of doing this. You know, if, if, if you watching me makes you feel negative, then go somewhere else. You know, I mean, there's like so much negativity in the world already. You know, it's really easy to be negative. It's like, there's just, there's just so much crap in the world. Like, honestly, if you don't find joy out of watching what I'm doing, then go somewhere else that gives you joy. Because if what I'm doing doesn't provide that for you, then yeah, I want you to go somewhere else. Because that's what I want you guys to experience when you're here. I want you to have fun being here. I want you to laugh and cry with me and and jump for joy and yell at the screen like I do for at Homelander when I get so angry at him. You know what I mean? Like that's what I want to do. I want us to be on this journey together. And when I do live streams, I want us to talk to each other and I want to watch a movie that like I've seen a hundred times so that when we're, when we're doing a live stream, we can talk to each other while I'm watching it. And I can tell you, you know, one of these scenes is what messed me up, you know, in my childhood and that kind of stuff. Like I want to get to know you guys. I read all your comments. So to read, to, to answer your question again, uh, Sega fan, I would like to see a more in-depth behind the scenes video with your editing process. 
yeah, I'm going to do some more behind the scenes videos for sure. Yeah, I'm going to start doing that. And I'm going to start doing a lot more of these Q&A videos as well. These are fun. It helps me to get to know you guys. It helps you guys get to know me. And that's, that's why I'm doing this. It's fun to all of us to go on this journey together, you know, for you guys to see that some of my emotions and reactions to movies and TV shows that you've seen are the same as yours. You know, I love when you guys tell me that in the comments, by the way, when you say, you know, you had the same emotion I had about this, or even when you guys say, you know, I had a different emotion than this, but then you tell me what yours was, what your feeling was. I'm like, wow, that's cool. Cause it was totally different than mine, you know? So I also get to learn something out of that too and get to see it from like a different perspective. I really appreciate those comments too. So that's it, you guys. That's my first review slash Q&A video of the first season of The Boys. Thank you guys for all of your questions. I hope that I answered them um, the way that you wanted them to be answered. That was, it was a lot of questions. This video is a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I got to go eat dinner now. I'm like starving. Um, you guys, I'm so grateful that you guys are here. Uh, and I'm going to... I'm going to start uh, watching some things too with my friends because um, I want to invite friends to come and watch movies and TV shows with me. Um, you know, and if it, it would be so great, like eventually if we could, if COVID wasn't happening, you know, for more people to come over here and, and, and do these reactions with me. Um, but it's, that's not a good idea right now. So, um, you know, sometimes I'm going to do reactions with people on Zoom so they can join me for a reaction but they won't actually be sitting beside me. They'll just be, you know, calling in to the to the reaction from a different uh, place. And I'm excited to do that too. I'm going to probably do that with some actors, some friends of mine, and also just just other people that are just people like me, just regular people like me. Um, and you guys, you know, I just want you to know, like, I am just a regular human being, just, you know, sitting here doing reactions to things that I love. I love movies and TV shows and I've, I've been watching movies and TV shows like obsessively almost since I was a very little girl and my dad introduced me to music and TV and movies at a really young age and I mean I became a Trekkie when I was like nine. <laughs> you know, uh, I've just, you know, I've always been into movies and pop culture and, 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 uh, and music. And, you know, a lot of you are saying to me, a lot of you say to me a lot of the time, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe it, your pop culture references. Well, I, that's how I was raised. You know, I grew up, this is, this was my life watching all this stuff. And I've read a lot of books too, but I've watched far more movies, you know, and I just was one of those people that that was, that was how I liked to experience things was visually. I was always like a visual person. And so I've always enjoyed watching uh, movies and really, really great TV shows and also music too. I love music so much. There's a reactor here on YouTube called JV TV. He's amazing. If you guys haven't gone to his channel, you should definitely go there. JV TV. He's awesome. He's such a sweetheart and he reacts to all music and he's awesome. He's amazing. Yeah, he's, he's incredible. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much. I love all of you so much. Thank you for all of your positive feedback. I really appreciate it. We're definitely going to do more of these. Okay. The Q and A's and the live streams. I'm really looking forward to those. They're going to be awesome. And uh, you guys come over and join me on Patreon if you can. I mean, I get it. Not everyone has money right now and I understand that. But like, and uh, I'm going to start this thing on YouTube here, like the join button so people can join for a dollar or whatever. And I want to start doing content for, um, for people who are subscribed to my YouTube channel. So we can do like kind of like live streams that are only for people that are members and and I'll, I'll, I'll do live streams for everybody as well. Of course I will. But I also want to offer things to people that are willing to get behind me and want to contribute to what I'm doing as well. Like, I want you guys to know, like, this is something that I, I actually want to make a real job for myself. That's what I want to do. This is like, I love doing this. I love it. And I would like to make this my job. I want it like to me, like doing something I love and being able to make a living at it is what life is about you know so many people work jobs that they don't like because they that's what they do to pay the bills and I've done that a lot in my life and when the pandemic happened um I lost my job also due to health reasons um 
And uh, I became unemployed and I started looking at other ways to make money and do things that I loved, things that were fun. And this was one of those things, you know. My friend suggested I do this because he had been with me to so many movies in my life. And he said, you're, you're crazy when you go to movies. Like, not, you know what I mean? Like, I just have very visceral reactions. And if any of you guys could be with me in a movie theater, this is how I act. You know, it's just, this how I am. So anyways, you guys, thank you so much. I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all of your support. I look forward to seeing you soon. And um, yeah, we'll do more of this. Okay. More Q&A. Have a great night. Great day wherever you are. Take care, guys. Bye.